Hello friends, Tal here, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Legion hotfix changes once again. Uh, and before that though, I do want to point out, I hope you guys have been able to notice, but there is a new mic, and you can hear that the audio quality hopefully is much clearer, much smoother, and everything just sounds better. Uh, one of the biggest problems with my channel, the biggest complaints, is that my audio quality isn't the best. So I went out and went ahead and invested into this mic because I care about this, I care about this process, I care about making these videos, and I care about you guys getting the information you need to get while also being able to listen and hear it and not get any annoying sounds or anything like that. So I went out and invested in a microphone. I hope you guys can hear it, I hope you guys can appreciate it, and I very, very much want all, to, all of you guys to let me know in the comments if there's anything that I should change with it, if you guys can still hear it okay, if there's any problems, things like that. I invested a bunch of money into this. I'm serious about this guys, I've said this a thousand times, I'm investing money into this because I want to make this good. But enough about that, talking about the hotfix changes. So my last video, I basically said that it was amazing to me that they can just hotfix in a spell, remove other spells, change the talents, all that kind of stuff, and they don't have to have an actual patch. There's no downtime, they can do it and you'll just realize that it's been changed. And that is still an amazing, wondrous thing and I want them to take advantage of it, I want them to keep using it. but. They need to be a little more responsible with that technology, the, their access to this new technology. Um, now Blizzard has a history of accidentally, slash not accidentally, but making changes and not documenting those changes until a little bit later. Now in this particular scenario, you can see here they actually tweeted, sometimes we poorly time hotfixes so that they go live after most people have left for the weekend leading to slow hotfix notes, apologies. And then that's mostly they're talking about the Death Knight and Paladin mobility. Uh, so what we talked about last video. And understand something, Blizzard doesn't do this on purpose. They're not like, oh, let's just change the game and you know, fuck them, they'll figure it out by the weekend. No, they're not doing it malicious like that. Sometimes, you know, I don't work at a video game company, I don't know what that's like, but I have to imagine that sometimes things get pushed out the pipeline at a certain time and it's not always the most convenient time. It's just the honest truth. Um, but I think that now more than ever, even though they've historically had a little bit of an issue documenting every single change that's ever happened, now more than ever they need to focus on making sure that when something like this gets changed, they let people know immediately. The reason for this video is there are undocumented Vengeance Demon Hunter changes. And as far as I'm aware, that's the only class that has these changes. Why? Well obviously if it's not documented, I have no idea. I've been in almost every single class's forums looking to see if anything else has been changed and I can't find anything. Um, for all I know there's specific numbers values that were changed, there's other things that were flipped around. It's hard for me to think that they would do an entire patch just changing Vengeance Demon Hunters um, as well as Death Knight and Paladin mobility, but I don't know for sure. I have no way of knowing. Now again, this is not something they did on purpose maliciously anything like that. No, come on, let's be for real. These are people that are enjoying their weekends. Blizzard employees are people too, so don't get into the whole hate bandwagon stuff that's honestly dumb. Uh, just flat out dumb. But I think that they need to make a concentrated effort that when they make these changes, they maybe just post out something saying, hey, you know, Fellblade does 50 damage now, it used to do 75. You don't need to explain it, you don't need to go into detail. Say that it was changed and when you come back from the weekend, then explain the changes if you feel that you must. Um, I just want to make sure that they're aware that when they make the, the ability to make these changes should be used immediately that the fact that they can just go in and oh this is a problem let's change it right now they should do that I, I firmly believe that they should but you should also make sure you document it because if you're making the changes someone in there knows what value has changed someone knows what went ahead and happened and I think it's important to keep in mind that that gets uh, recorded but anyways guys taking a look at what the actual changes were if we look here, so Vengeance Demon Hunters, the first thing that got changed was the Darkness. Now this cooldown is going to be granting a 20% chance to avoid all damage from attack. Still pretty terrible, but it used to be 15%, now it's 20%. It's still really just a sort of good uh, cooldown for tanks and auto attack damage from bosses. Besides that, not really. Um, I don't see it having much play outside of that. I mean, you could say it's only reliable for boss auto attacks, so you know, reliable and uh, quotation marks because it is an RNG ability, but it's a nice little buff and it's nice to have. Now we're going to talk about what changed and then we're going to talk about why it got changed, okay? So first, Gluttony was removed as a talent and it was replaced in the tier by Fell Eruption. Fell Eruption is going to obviously be doing the stun and a little bit of damage, more damage if the target can't be stunned. 
Now, competing in this row is Fellblade and Flame Crash. And as far as numbers go right now, Flame Crash is your AoE, Fellblade is your single target, and Fell Eruption has no real place. Um, the reason for that is, according to the math, and remember guys, every time I talk about math, anything, anytime I talk about specific values, I'm talking about things that I've seen from research on Simulation Craft and research on, on MMO Champion. This particular math, coming courtesy of Monkey over in the Vengeance Demon Hunter forum, is that essentially you need about four fell blades to do the damage of one fell eruption, assuming that the target that you're fell erupting cannot be stunned. So, fell blade has a haste reduced cooldown and it gets reset by sheer. Most of the time, you're going to get those four fell blades, uh, which means even from a DPS, it's already the better survivability choice. But even from a DPS choice, fell blade just wins. Um, I think that Fell Eruption needs a little bit of a buff, that way it'll actually become a DPS option. Um, whereas right now, Fell Blade, there's no reason not to take it or Fame Clash if you just want AoE DPS. The other change that went ahead and happened was they removed Sigil of Chains from being a baseline spell and they added it to the Talon tier, taking the place of Fell Eruption here in this tier. Now, Initially, I didn't like that change at all. I think Sigil of Change is iconic to the Vengeance Demon Heart. I think it's very important to have that because that's another mass script that's available. But uh, they also cut the cooldown in half. So what is formerly a two minute sigil is now a one minute sigil. That is a one minute Gorfiend's Grasp. Yes, it's smaller. Yes, it takes like two seconds to, to actually activate. But if you're even remotely worth your salt, you'll know how to use it and you'll use it fine and it won't be a problem. Um, I think that's crazy. You still have access to the legendary that reduces the cooldown on your sigils when you soul cleave, and you still have access to the legendary that just resets them when you go into metamorphosis form. So I see Vengeance Demon Hunters have being the premier Gorfin's Grasp tanks. I just I don't see any other way for it not to turn out like that. Blood Decay still have access to it, sure, and it's bigger and instant, but if you need more consistent, you know, grasps, you just take a Vengeance Demon Hunter. There's no there's no argument. I don't buy into the argument of it being weak Gorfin's Grasp, because it's not. It's more skill based, that's all it is. Competing in this tier is concentrated sigils, which causes it to be activated at your feet and the effects, they're gonna be increased by two per seconds. I don't see this ever being used. This is good as a lazy choice or a, a less intensive choice. I guess lazy is not the accurate thing to say, uh, but for the most part, sigil of misery and sigil of silence, you want that to be targeted. Uh, and then quicken sigils would probably be your other option in any situation where sigil of change is not necessary. You take quick and sigils, just making them activate one second faster and having their cooldown be reduced by 20%, which just means you get more sigil of flames off. Um, overall, I still think sigil of chains will be taken more often than quick and sigils, uh, but you know it's important to note that they went ahead and made that into a talent. Now, why do I think it's been made into a talent? There's two things about the Vengeance Demon Hunter that I think are very important to state outright as we make this discussion. Number one is that they have some survivability problems. They are not the most reliable tanks. They're a self-healing type of tank, very similar to DK's, um, but they're a little bit squishy right now, and I think that they need a little bit of buff. The problem is they have a stupid amount of utility, just absolutely dumb. And honestly, once you have some gear, and even if there was a small buff, they would probably become the premier mythic uh, plus dungeon tank because they can do so much by themselves. They can disorient a group of mobs for 30 seconds on a one minute cooldown. They can silence a pack of casters and if you're horde like me, you just you know jump into another pack and then use your racial silence and that's two AoE silences that you have. You have to remember, it's only night elves and blood elves. If you're a horde player, you have two AoE silences. The only, the only class slash race and combo that has two AoE silences just available to them just freely and on a relatively short cooldown. You have a lot of utility, but that comes with a cost. Vengeance Demon Hunters need a little bit of a survivability buff, but too much of a buff will easily make them overpowered. And you always have to be careful. It's a balanced scale that needs to be maintained. Um, so I understand why they made it into a talent. At the same time, they buffed the shit out of it because now it's going to be a choice and it's competing with things, which is why it's a one minute cooldown now, just like all the other sigils. Um, so it's hard for me to figure out if I like or dislike this change. I like it in the sense that it's just making a talent, like this tier in particular wasn't too much of a difficult choice. It's really, you're just losing Fell Eruption is all, it, all that's really happening as far as utility, which again is a hit to the utility because Fell Eruption was a stun. So on top of all your sigils, you can talent into a stun. Um, it's important to keep in mind these types of things because they are targeted nerfs to the utility of the Vengeance Demon Hunter, which I hope opens it up 
two buffs to the survivability and base kit of the Demon Hunter. Um, but anyways, I wanted to go ahead and make this video because I wanted to point out that as cool as I think those hotfix changes are, and there are new powers and new abilities that they can do with these hotfix changes, they need to be a little careful with just changing things and not telling people. I don't know if other classes got changes. I don't know if values got changed on the other tanks or if their cooldowns were reduced or anything like that. From what I was able to look at immediately, unless something was super obvious and I just didn't notice it, I can't find any other changes. But at the same time, I had to go through hell just to try to see if there were changes, let alone trying to understand them or figure out what the reasoning behind them. Again, if they want to make big changes randomly, that's fine. But you need to also document it in a very simple, um, not too crazy, you don't have to explain the change, just document the change, put it off to the side, and that way you can go ahead and later on, when it's not the weekend, explain it to people. But anyways guys, um, that's all I wanted to make this video for, just to go ahead and talk over these changes, uh, talk about the new mic, and hope that the audio quality is really good. If you like this video, go ahead and drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And more importantly, let me know what you think of the new audio quality. It's the biggest complaint on my channel so far, and I wanted to go ahead and make sure that you guys uh, had a better experience, better viewing experience, especially as we head into the ever-looming August 30th Legion launch. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch the video, and I hope you have a fantastic time.